Here we have a Bose Solo 5 speaker that came for repair. It does not power on. Speaker looks something like this. And let's read what the customer wrote so we know what we're looking at. I have a Bose Solo TV speaker that does not power on anymore. No physical damage, no light in device. When connected to power, there should be a light. New remote battery, tested AC power supply, and it was working. Use power tester and saw power going to the board. Watch YouTube and saw others with the same failure. Unable to repair. Thought it would be good content for you to attempt to fix. If cost is too much to repair, I'll just buy a new one. Bose will not repair because the unit is from Canada and service will not support USA. So how much is this speaker? If the speaker is not worth it, why did the customer mail it over? Spend money on shipping and then he's going to spend money on shipping to send it back to him. And if that device is a no fix, he's going to also pay for the repair at 10 fee. Why bother? Let me see how much that unit is. Amazon, $199. Used, somewhere around $149, plus shipping, of course, because this device is heavy. So you're looking at $200 speaker. Customer must have spent at least $30, $40 to mail this over. It's heavy and it's big. I do not know how much money he spent to mail it over and he's going to spend money on shipping for us to mail it back to him. How much is our service fee? $5, $10? Customer is looking at at least $130, $140 and I'm being generous if we are to fix it. Let's go ahead and attempt the repair. Since the customer said it will make good content, we have to listen to the customer, right? Customer advised that this will be good content, so we have to listen. We already have the motherboard out right here. We're going to take a closer look at the board and see if we see anything burned, anything crispy, any fried chicken, any liquid damage. We can start all the way from here. Focus. This is not something that I fix every day. Let's see if we can figure it out. We'll start with quick visual inspection. And nothing stands out as being faulty. LED 1, LED 2. And the power adapter is right over here. The power connector, not the adapter. If we flip the board. I do not see anything obvious on back of the board either. And it's going to be a shot in the dark. What is going on with this board? You know what? Why not plug power onto the board and monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what happens? Maybe that would give us a clue. Let's plug the power adapter and that's a 20 volt power adapter. And just to be honest with you, I did that before I started the video a few days ago. And I'll let you know what I found out. Because I already ordered the chip, and I think that chip is the problem. Look at this. I have power plugged in to the board, and we see something hot right over here. So maybe that's a starting point. Right there. And if we look at what's here, we see a chip, 54335. So a few days ago when I tested that board and I came across the chip, I said, why not order that chip and we'll try it together and see if that will fix the problem. It may or it may not fix the problem. We do not know, but that's a starting point. We do not have any circuit diagrams for this board. And we do not want to spend a lot of time on this board since it's not worth fixing. 
The customer already said, if it's going to cost too much, he's going to buy a new one. But he still paid to ship it over here. I do not know how that works. Where's common sense? So I ordered one ship, only one, because I do not think that we will see this speaker here again. Unless somebody want to mail the motherboard only and that fixes the problem, then we may be able to help out the customer. And in case you're wondering, the chip is a switching voltage regulator. And switching voltage regulators can fail. They take a lot of abuse. Now, it may be normal for that chip to get hot when power is plugged in. We do not know, but it's a starting point. Pin number one is on the top right. We have just a tiny bit more solder than what we need. Maybe we can wake off some of that solder in the center. Just like that. And perfect. We see one pin bridging, but that's okay. We like bridges. Very nice. And now we're gonna press and hold. And we're done. All right, we're done. Now let's see what happens if we plug the power adapter. And we still do not see a light. Oh, here, right there. I do see the lights. Look at this. <laughs> We see the green light. The board is alive. Wow. The board is alive. We fixed it. So the problem was that switching voltage regulator. Wow. We did it. Now all we have to do is invoice the customer for $300 and the job is done. So we can make it worth it to the customer plus shipping, of course. If somebody has the same speaker with the same issue, you can remove the board and mail it over. It's a lot cheaper to mail just the board and it will cost you less to fix. Look at this. I see a green light and a red light. All right, we're done. So I'm going to hand this over to Big Boss to reassemble and possibly test if he knows how. And I'll continue the video if there is anything else to add to the video. Big Boss is almost done with the reassembly. And do we see a light? Yes, right there. We see an orange light. We do have a remote control here. And if we press on the power, power button, we can see that the light turned green. Look, when I press the power button, it goes orange. I press on the power button again, we see the green light. And I believe we have to press the Bluetooth button. Let's see what happens. So, oh, right there. We see a blinking blue light. Is it connected? Yes. Awesome. So you can play one of my videos because if you play a song, YouTube is gonna demonetize the video. 
Okay, that's fine. See? It's working. Perfect. Fabrice. A commercial for Fabrice. Awesome. Let me just turn it off. The speaker is working and we did an amazing job. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much, big boss. Boss of all bosses. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.